Should employers be allowed to say to people, if you don't have the jab, then you can't have a job? As the vaccine rollout continues, with most adults expected to be offered a jab by the autumn, we're seeing some employers debate whether it's legal for them to insist that all employees are vaccinated. Speaking on ITV last night, the Justice Secretary Robert Buckland said it's unlikely employers will be able to insist on vaccines under existing contracts, but suggested it may be possible with new ones. It would depend very much on the terms of employment and the particular contracts. I think, generally speaking, I would be surprised if there were contracts of employment existing now that did make that approach lawful. Uh, I think, frankly, you know, the, the issue would probably have to be tested. I can see that in particular work environments, the desirability of having a vaccine is going to be higher than in others. It's easy to see how it might be desirable in some industries, if you work in a care home or looking after vulnerable people, for example. Barchester Healthcare, which runs more than 200 care homes, has already said it would not hire new staff if they had not had the vaccine. And the London-based Pimlico Plumbers said that when vaccines are widely available, all new workers will be required to have one. Some employers say requiring staff to get the COVID vaccine is just another way to keep employees and customers safe. But critics say it's discriminatory and totally unacceptable. So, should employers be allowed to say no jab, no job? Perhaps your workplace has already brought it up. Do text us your comments on 88291 or email vine at bbc.co.uk with your phone number. Let's talk first about this to Charlie Mullins, the chairman and founder of Pimlico Plumbers, which is an independent plumbing company. Hello, Charlie. Good afternoon to you. Yeah, good afternoon, Vanessa. So you've made no bones about this, really. You've been saying no jab, no job for some while now. But, of course, we don't have mandatory vaccines in this country. We can't be compelling people to be vaccinated, however desirable we think that it is. Uh, well, I think we need to make changes then. Um, you know, we are talking about uh, life and death here. We're talking about the safety of our staff, safety of our customers. And as an employer, um, I have an obligation to... Uh, for the safety of my staff and customers. And, um, you know, under health and safety law, that uh, we can have this added to a new contract. And obviously, I've, I've gone into detail a uh, great length with our lawyers, Miss Condi Raya, mm -hmm. and uh, the senior partner there, Dan Daniel Napolin, has uh, said that it shouldn't be a problem at all to add it to it. Um, I, I think if more than anything, it, it's going to be an obligation to add it because... If you're not actually going to protect your staff, then I think you're going to be more liable to be in trouble than trying to protect them. What's he said, though, about people who work for you already? Because the issue seems to be that you can say it's conditional if you're offering somebody a new job in a new workplace. But if someone's already yeah. working for you, I don't know whether you have been advised that you can turf them out if they don't have the jab, have you? Uh, uh, Vanessa, I'm not turfing anybody out. Um, we've got to add it to existing contracts and existing staff have a choice whether they're happy to sign for it or not. But I'm sure, as you're aware, that most people at the moment would crawl across the snow naked to get a vaccine. It's a beautiful picture you've just painted there, Charlie. I'm trying not to envisage it too vividly right now. Um, some people, of course, can't have the jab for medical reasons, and some people will simply say that their medical history and the procedures they are or are not having are their own business. They're nothing to do with the employer. Um, yeah, look, every, everybody's got their own opinion. Everybody's got a choice on, on this. But, you know, I, I believe that we're on uh, strong ground here, that we we can um, certainly have new contracts with it in. And we, we'll, we'll sort of be offering it all to existing staff. And, uh, you know, I think in probably two or three months from now, I don't think this is going to be such a big issue. I mean, possibly 90% of, of our population will have already had the vaccine and it'll just be like a normal situation. I, I think we're making too much of it at the moment. We're complicating it. Let's remember that, you know, there's over 100 probably 20,000 now, unfortunately, that have died with it. Mm -hmm. You've got people are very, very ill with it. And look look where we are. We're in lockdown. We've got no life at the moment. We can't travel. We can't go into bars, restaurants. We can't go to shops. Children can't go to school. I mean, we need to do something about it. We're being told by the scientists this is this is 
what's going to help us. And I think we need to follow that advice. Right, let me bring into the discussion Silky Carlo, director of Big Brother Watch, the Civil Liberties Campaign Group. Silky, you hear Charlie Mullins talking about this. Obviously, his plumbers go into people's homes, you know, right close and personal. You can see, can you not, why he would say that he would want it to be um, absolutely essential to, to, uh, to his employees to have the vaccine? Well, I think it's really alarming and it's very alarming for listeners to hear an employer talking about no jab, no job policies. As you say, mandatory vaccines are not a a feature in UK law. In fact, they're specifically prohibited in UK public health law. Um, And to pursue this as a policy will be coercive. And it will be discriminatory to young people. They're last in line to be offered the vaccine. They're also generally at low risk of serious illness to pregnant women who are currently not recommended to have the vaccine. I'm I'm sure Pimlico Plumbers does employ women. Um, And for people with religious and personal beliefs who might not want to have the vaccine, people with illnesses and disabilities that prevent them from having the vaccine. So this is a really serious issue, let alone the fact that Vaccines at the moment are about protecting the self, um, particularly the most vulnerable from illness. There's no evidence about transmissibility yet, so we don't actually even know that having a vaccine protects other people. There is, a, think, excuse me, there is a degree of evidence, particularly vis-à-vis the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, that it no, pre- prevents no, transmission to some degree. There is some oh, some research about oh, that. But let me let me give Charlie sorry, let me give Charlie the the, say, the, sorry, the chance really to respond though. This, this, there's no conclusive evidence on transmissibility yet. But the and indication think, is that, that that vaccine um, will help to stop the transmission. Let's let's bring Charlie back into this. You hear what yeah, Silky look, has to say. Okay. What do you think, Charlie? Yeah, look, look th- th- that, that's what you're saying and you're reeling it off. And uh, it doesn't mean what you're saying is true or correct. Um, there's two, two different sides to the story here. So you're coming up with, with things that you believe is, is true, but... There's many other um, experts saying that it doesn't affect pregnant women. You made some, I don't know, snappy, sarcastic remark about do we employ women? I mean, we're not going down that road. Of course we employ women. We have loads of women that work for us. So you're just sort of trying to sort of come up as if we're doing something wrong. We're the good guys here. We're not the bad people. It's people like yourself that are putting people off it and, and... keeping us all in the situation we're in. You said that, um, you know, as a country, we don't have mandatory um, vaccines. Well, the world's changed. We didn't have this virus sort of 10, 11 months ago. We need to change with the times. And if everybody listens to people like yourself, then we're continuing lockdown. People will continue to be dying. People will continue being ill and we'll have no life. So I'll ask you a question, lady. If I offered you a plumber and he's at the vaccine or not at it, which one would you have? I just want to come back to what you're saying. I mean, precisely the opposite. I think this should be a moment of optimism because vaccines are available. We've had such high take up. But it, it mustn't be a moment where we do put in place discriminatory, unfair and coercive policies. And so it is important. You do do have to account for the fact that at the moment, it is not medically advised for pregnant women to have a vaccine and other categories of people. Rubbish. That's just the, that's just the that's just the fact. And I think it's really important on a national broadcast that we stick fact, to lady. the fact as well and that it's we stick to the law. So I think I, I think it's quite clear that this is really about defending wealthy bosses from liability. It's not about workers' rights. It's not about customers' rights. Um, who live in the real world where there aren't mandatory vaccines. It's not even about public health. Uh, because there isn't really? the evidence but, yet about, but May I ask a, a question, S- Silky? Could I ask a question, please? Charlie did ask a pretty basic question, actually. And when you say this is about the real world, then this is a real world question. He asked a pretty pretty basic question, which is, would you prefer, should a plumber come to your home to repair some kind of kink in your U-bend or whatever it is, would you prefer that plumber to have been vaccinated? Would you not care? Would you care? I think that's a legitimate question. How would you feel about that? Yeah, I've had plenty of plumbing work over the last 12 months, actually, and it's, it's absolutely none of my business um, what the, the health status of or vaccination status of a person um, doing, doing work is. And I, I really worry about entering a kind of society where we are demanding that kind of information from people. It's also very counterproductive for, for public health. And there is some history on this. In fact, in Britain, we had okay, mandatory well, vaccines at the end of the 19th century. And mandatory well, vaccines caused a backlash um, and caused okay. anti-vaccination All right, look, campaigns. Second, All right, let, let Charlie Mullins respond, Silky Carlo, please. What, what well, do you want to say, Charlie? 
Well, okay, you said it won't make no difference to you. Okay, so from a common sense view, common sense, what would you say? Someone who's had the vaccine or someone who's not. Just on a common sense, the answer is yes or no. What would what's you say? The, what's the, what's, would you what's, would you rather question, or would you not rather the plumber that came to do the work in your house had or had not had a vaccine? Would yeah, you... I've answered the, I've answered that question very clearly. It's absolutely none of my business. Well, you it's, it's... You're complicated. It, you're complicated about an hundred year old law about uh, vaccines are not mandatory. No, I've we, answered it very looking... clearly. It's none of my business, and frankly, okay. it's none of your business. Well, I didn't ask you if and... it's your business. I asked you what one you would prefer. One whip that's been vaccinated or one that ain't. It's, it's really simple. Yes it's or no? It's very simple. And I've answered without. the question. I have absolutely no preference at all. It's really? none of my business and it should be none of the business of employers. Um, well, it, unfo- it, it, unfortunately, you're wrong. As I said, as an employer, we have an obligation to stay for the safety of our staff and the safety of our customers. And I'm not going to put my staff at risk and I'm not going to put customers at risk by employing people that haven't had the vaccine. So okay, the, well, fi- you know the, final people... word to, the final word to you on this, I mean, you yeah. know, you, you might say that in practical terms, customers might be concerned and they might ask, you know, has, has that plumber or cleaner or painter or decorator or anybody at all, the person delivering my groceries or whatever, have they been vaccinated? They might be concerned and they might feel that it is their business. There's still no conclusive evidence on transmissibility and it's really important that people, and that includes employees, are able to make their own choices. I personally trust people to make their own choices about what's best for their safety. I don't think that's the job of employers.